Hey everybody, welcome back to Running Gun. I'm JT, and in this video, I'm gonna show you guys in Adobe Lightroom Mobile how to create this dark and moody looking photo. So this is an edit I did in Lightroom Classic a while back, and I thought it would be pretty neat to replicate in Adobe Lightroom Mobile. I've been using Lightroom Mobile a lot lately, and I really enjoy it. It's super powerful, and you can create some really neat looking photos. Uh, just like you can in Lightroom Classic or Lightroom CC. So here is the before image. Just a nice waterfall, very green and saturated. And then here is our dark and moody forest look. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and reset all of our settings. Reset all. And you can see we are back to our nice saturated photo here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with this little sun button right here and that is our basic adjustments that's our curves that is our exposure everything i hit first when i immediately go into lightroom so it is a little bit bright so i'm going to bring down our exposure just a touch i'm about a half stop and that looks good i'm going to bring up our contrast a bit really make those whites pop and then in this instance i'm going to bring down our highlights all the way and then bring up our shadows and what we're going to do is we're going to add some contrast to this image in a little bit so i do want to make our whites pop just a bit and then i'm going to bring down our blacks and really punch our blacks that looks pretty good bring up our whites a little bit more and I don't want to make this too dark yet. We're going to do that in curves in just a second. So here's the before again, and here's where we are so far. We're just going to slowly work our way into that dark and moody feel. So the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to go down. I'm going to look at color temperature. I'm going to cool this down just a touch, make it a little bit more blue. Those greens are looking very yellow. So about negative 12 looks good. We're just balancing out those leaves in that waterfall. And then I'm going to turn down our saturation, probably about halfway. And turning down our saturation looks pretty good so far. We've got a good start to this image. So let's really get into the details and let's start playing around with our curves. Curves is an absolutely critical part of this image. Playing with your tone curves is just super powerful. I do it to all of my photos. And if you wanna just mess with certain sections of your tone curve, you can hit this little wavy button on the right, bring up your shadows and highlights, but I'm gonna hit this RGB button on the left, and that's actually gonna let me manipulate my highlight and my shadow points right here. And that's gonna be very important in just a second here. So what we're gonna do first is I'm gonna lift up our shadows. And I'm going to bring them up just a touch right there. And then I'm going to bring down, excuse me, I'm going to lift our blacks and then crush our shadows a touch. That looks pretty good. I like putting another curve point right there in the middle just for some added control. Then I'm going to lift our highlights a bit. So we are already getting pretty moody there especially with that shadow lift. This is looking pretty darn good so far. So I think we're done with curves right now. I will come back to that in a bit. Again, here's our before, and here is our moody forest waterfall image. So the next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna play with color a little bit more. I'm gonna turn my tint a little bit more towards the green. And that looks good and away from the magenta. I think everything else there looks pretty good. So next I wanna play with what is our HSL sliders in Lightroom Classic, and it's called Color Mix in Lightroom Mobile. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start off with our reds. I'm gonna leave the hue where it's at, but I'm gonna change the saturation and I'm gonna turn the saturation down in our reds because we're going for a very foresty, moody vibe. I might even move the reds towards the oranges. Just a hint, that looks pretty good. Next, we are gonna move on to our orange tones. I'm gonna turn down the saturation very, very slightly. 
and then we're going to turn up the luminance. As you can see, we have some oranges over in our rocks. We have some oranges in our logs over here. And we don't want to completely get rid of our warm tones, but we just want to have them under control. And you can see we don't want to have them very saturated. We want to have them a little bit desaturated so our greens and our blues really pop. So let's move on to yellow next. And we will add a little bit of saturation to our yellow because there's some yellow in the leaves and we will also brighten up the luminance. And you can see if we turn down the luminance, pay attention to those leaves, they really brighten up and I want some of those leaves to pop. So let's move on to our green because I think our yellows look good. And I'm going to move the hue of the green over towards the blue quite a bit, about halfway up there. And I'm going to turn our saturation down a touch. And that looks pretty good. And again, I want to turn up the luminance of our leaves. So they look a little bright so far, but we'll come back to those and we will do some more editing in just a second. Let's move on to our cyan tones right now. I'm going to move those towards the blue. And I'm going to turn the saturation down a touch. And I'm also going to turn up our luminance here in our cyan colors. Let's move on to blue and I don't think I did much to the blue just turned it towards the cyan and in this particular image it's not doing too much but if you do have some blues in your image we'll desaturate them just a touch and then I left my magentas and purples violets alone so we are good for that I think that is good um, I'm gonna go back to our curves and do some minor tweaks and adjustments. So remember we go to our exposure window, we'll go to our curves, and what I'm going to do with our tone curve is I'm going to play with these lifted shadows again. We have a little bit too much detail, so I'm going to lift that just a touch and bring that down. All right, let's hit done with curves and let's look at our image. Again, here is our before and then here is where we are at right now. We're getting super close. I think what we actually need to do is let's do some split toning. So I'm going to find our split toning right here. And one of the things we haven't done yet is add a little bit of dehaze. I like doing that just to add a little bit of a pop to the image. It's kind of like a mid-tone contrast. And then we're going to go up to our split toning menu right there. And what we're going to do, let's add some blues to the highlights and some purplish blues to the shadows. So I will click and drag my point and I'm going for about 120 for the hue. That's close and saturation about 10. That looks good. And then for our shadows, I'm going to go up to around 270, 280, right in that purple region, 270. That looks good. And then lower the saturation a touch. There we go, and that looks good. And then, of course, we have to add just a hint of a vignette to this image to really bring your eye into that waterfall. So let's start adding that vignette. Move that midpoint. Just play around with it until it looks good. Always turn the feather all the way up. A little bit of roundness, and that looks pretty good. Again, here's our before. Here's our after. We are looking super moody right now. And now I'm going to go back. We've made most of our adjustments. I'm going to turn the saturation down a touch more. I'm going to always go and I'm always going to sharpen my images no matter what, whether it's digital or I'm scanning film in. I always turn that detail up just a little bit and turn up my sharpening just so I'm getting a nice sharp digital photo. Look at how sharp that waterfall is. That looks great. And now I'm just going to go through, I'm going to make some minor tweaks, like I'm going to turn down our clarity a hint, just to add a little bit of a glow to that waterfall. I think that looks great so far. And then again, just doing some minor adjustments. We'll play with our greens. And if you see this little crosshair up here, I can hit that and I can play with the saturation of individual colors. So our green, it feels a little bit too saturated right now. So I'm going to select you can see it's highlighting the green and the yellow. And I'm just going to drag my finger down, 
drag that saturation down. And I also want to bring up the luminance and exposures of our green and our yellow. So I'm going to hit that same point. You can see on the right, it selects our green and our yellow, and I'm going to drag up. Now you can also see there's some tones down here. If I select right here, kind of an orangish yellowish in the rocks. I want to bring up the luminance a little bit in our rocks. And remember when I said we don't want to completely kill off our oranges, I'm going to bring that up just a hint. 30, maybe 25 looks good. So I'm going to hit that crosshair again to close that out. This is looking pretty good so far. Let's tap our image over here to see a full view. And then I can double tap to zoom into 100%. Just takes a second to load. Those greens look nice and bright and desaturated. All of our other tones are pretty desaturated. And again, to bring back your editing tools, just tap your image or to make them go away, tap your image. And I'm just gonna add a little bit of contrast. There's always little tweaks that I do. I edit images for hours sometimes, but it's all about making individual tweaks to your individual images because not every edit will work on every image. But that is our dark and moody look in Adobe Lightroom. And if you're looking to save some time, I will have a preset and a LUT of this on my website, which is therunninggun.com. Just check out my official store for all my LUTs, assets, and presets for photo editing. And you can just throw that on your images in Lightroom or your images in Photoshop or even your videos in Premiere and After Effects. So that is all for this tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Remember, hit that like button if you learned something from this video and be sure to subscribe to the channel so you can see all of my new Lightroom editing tutorials and the rest of my photography tips and tricks. So that's all for this video. And as always, get out and go shoot.